Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be talking about the Smith Moore Gambit, and we're basically going to be discussing well, why don't we see this more? Like, why don't we see this more at like the top Grandmaster levels? Like, why don't we see Grandmasters trying this? And the answer to that question, it it may actually surprise you. Um, so the Smith Moore Gambit, if you don't know, it happens after e4, c5, d4, c takes d4, c3. And the question is, why don't we see this? I mean, at least as a surprise weapon. I mean, people play all kinds of gambits. You know, the Marshall Gambit is considered so dangerous that people just avoid it. You know, they just play an anti-marshal. I mean, we don't even really have theory on the marshal anymore. We just have theory on anti-marshals because nobody wants to play against the marshal because it's been analyzed basically to a draw. So, and there's other gambits out there that have been tried that are that are a little questionable. You know, the Evans Gambit certainly been, has been tried. Um, uh, Kasparov beat, you know, Vishyanand with it years ago. It gets revived all the time. People do great with it. And there the uh, King's Gambit, um, the Banco Gambit, uh, uh, even uh, the, the Nackmanson Gambit, which is highly questionable, just got played against um, uh, Magnus Carlsen in a bullet game, and Magnus Carlsen lost. So what, what's so special about the smith Mora? Why doesn't the smith Mora get played? Well, for starters, it's a little less reputable than other Gambits. So that's the first thing you have to understand. It's not as reputable as other Gambits. So in order to understand that, we have to kind of go into the main line of the Gambit. We have to understand why. So dc3 knight c3 knight c6 knight f3 and then there's basically two lines that have been tried the the first line that people really tried to play was d6 bishop c4 and then black actually has to be really careful how he finishes his development he has to play a6 first and then he has to be careful about how he plays knight f6 and bishop g4 so that he can get an e6 and he can complete his development but for the most part black was completing his development in these positions if he studied very carefully and didn't make any mistakes and he was doing fine so black was okay here um, uh, white, white had a lot of resources here. Actually, I have to admit, White has more resources here and just in the mainline Smith Moore Gambit in general than I previously thought. And um, there's plenty of positions where White can at least get equality, or he can get his pawn back, and he can have a playable position. And it's, you know, it's it's not it's not better than 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 say other gambits that you could play are more aggressive even than the open Sicilian. But it's definitely something worth playing um, for for some players, you know, that aren't too worried about you know, necessarily, you know, winning the game. They just want to have some tricks and then just have a draw as kind of like a backstop. That's fine. You know, you can do that, right? Um, so, you know, this this wasn't a huge issue for the people that just really wanted to play the Smith Mora just for the tricks, you know, just, just for tricks, you know. I could play it. And there's plenty of players, even at the top levels, that'll do that. They'll play an opening just for the tricks. I don't think my opponent knows it, but I can trick him, you know. And if he if he knows it, fine, I get a draw this round, and I'll, I'll try to beat somebody next round. You know, I'll make up for it. So you'd see openings like that on the Grandmaster level where people are willing to do it. You know, they call them just for tricks, right? Okay, so... The other thing people were doing is black, and this was just a little bit, you could also play for equality after knight f3, you could play e6, and I think maybe this was giving it more headaches, because there's fewer tricks here. And actually, what was really fun about it was there was one trick for black, it was happening after bishop c4, queen c7, castles, knight f6, queen e2, and then black would actually play for the tricks. So you're playing an opening, you're playing it just for the tricks, but now it's not you that has the trick, it's black that has the tricks. Um, black actually sets up a trick with the move knight g4. It's a positional move too, because like in, against g3, we're controlling the square e5, so it's positional, and if everything gets played correctly, we're, we're heading into a position that's, that's roughly roughly equal, again, just roughly equal. It's nothing special, just roughly equal. Um, you know, maybe, maybe black's a little better, maybe white's a little better, so it's unclear. Okay, but black's the one playing for the trick now. And so that was upsetting for the Smith Moore players, you know, because they were the ones that were playing the opening just for the tricks with the draws, the backstop. Now Black is doing that. He's playing for the trick. And then if it doesn't work out, he's got about an equal position as a backstop. So so he kind of turned the tables a little bit on White. So this was giving people headaches for a while. Now, if you don't see the trick, I'm going to show you the trick. So let's say White were to play the move H3 to just kick the knight back. I'm going to kick you back. You just wasted a move with your knight. Take a minute. See if you can find Black's next move. Okay. If you found it, the move is knight to d4. And that's just winning the game. And the whole point of knight to d4 is on knight d4, I'm attacking the queen, and I'm attacking the knight on f3. And the knight on f3 is defending against the mate threat on h2. And you can try this in your own games. Um, this is a this is a really quick way to win sometimes. <laughs> this is kind of fun. Um, so you're threatening mate on h2. So if h takes g4, you're going to play knight takes queen. And if knight takes d4, you're going to play queen h2. And no matter what you do, you're going to lose either your queen or you're going to get checkmated on the next move. One of those two things is going to happen. Okay, I mean, you can actually, yeah, you can throw in knight b5. It doesn't help you because you're taking the queen with check. So, Okay, so that that's that's why the Smith-Moore is a little bit more questionable than other openings. But even with that being said, 
I don't think that's the real reason that people don't play the Smith Mora on the top levels. I think the real reason that people don't play the Smith Mora is because, in essence, you are also playing a boring opening. And that boring opening is the C3 Sicilian. Because I want you to look at this board. This isn't just a Smith Mora Gambit. This is also a C3 Sicilian. It's not just a C3 Sicilian by transposition. I mean, it is a C3 Sicilian. Okay, like, and the easiest way to prove that this is a C3 Sicilian is just to play the move Knight of 6. After the move Knight of 6, if white continues with the move E5, we have a direct transposition into the C3 Sicilian. Knight of 3, Knight C6, C4, D6. That's your main line C3 Sicilian right there. And that's not just a direct transposition of the C3 Sicilian. Let's just change the move order up. Let's just say we play a C3 Sicilian, just so you can see how this works, this transposition. If I were to play knight of 6 here, the main line is E5, D5, knight D5, D4. C takes D4. We're already in the identical position. This, this works out exactly the same. There are literally no differences here. And the fact that the Smith Mora already starts out as a questionable opening to begin with gives you another problem because you can of course always insist on playing a gambit so you could play a move instead of playing e5 to attack this knight and transpose directly into this e3 sicilian you could play the move bishop d3 and just keep playing a gambit but like i said the smith Moore gambit was already kind of questionable now it's just probably unsound because now you're not just down a pawn you're down a tempo so here you know black has every right to take the pawn and then after knight c3 knight c6 knight f3 d6 he's now playing a smith Moore gambit but your bishop is not on c4 so what are you doing? What's the plan here? Okay, this doesn't make any sense. I've even been a little bit more aggressive with it, and um, I've, I've played the move g6, and I've kind of played it like a dragon. And I can do that. I can play the dragon, and I can actually get castled without having any tricks. There's no tricks in the position with the bishop on d3. You have to two-step this bishop from d3 to c4 to have tricks. So I can just play like a g6, bishop g7, I can castle, and I can just play the dragon up a pawn. I love the dragon anyway. Oh, why, why can't I play it up a pawn? That sounds great. Okay, so that's 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 one problem. You're just transposing into a C3 Sicilian. And you can transpose into the C3 Sicilian a couple different ways. Like you can play the move, um you can play the move after d4, c takes d4, c3. You can of course play the move knight of six, which I just went over, which is a direct transposition. Or we could play the move d5 here. And this transposes into a different type of C3 Sicilian. This transposes into the C3 Sicilian with D5. Now, of course, this is actually a little bit different because after E takes D5, Queen takes D5, you've actually already committed to the move C captures D4. So some grandmasters don't like this because, you know, the tippy top main line of the C3 Sicilian, you leave this pawn on C5 and then you'll play like Knight of 6 and E6 or Knight of 6 and Knight C6. So it's a little different. You don't take on D4 right away. And there's a slight difference when you take on d4 right away in the c3 Sicilian, because after c takes d4, you don't get a chance to play bishop before they're threatening knight to c3. So you can't just transpose back into your main line if you were playing something a little bit more main line, like knight of 6. So if you play knight of 6 here, they're going to kick you with knight c3, and you don't have bishop b4. But of course, you can still play this line. This is still considered a relatively reputable line against the c3 Sicilian. You can play knight c6, knight f3, and you can actually play e5. And th there's actually been a lot of high-level games in this. This is okay uh, for, for black. You have to know your stuff, and it's a little risky, but you can certainly play this way. That's fine. So so the question is, okay, there, there are a handful of people that are playing the black pieces against the smith Moore that don't want to play the move knight f6 because maybe it's not in their repertoire. Maybe they play the move d5 against the regular uh, c3 Sicilian, and they don't have this particular version of, of the... Um, c3 sicilian in their repertoire so what are they gonna do what are their their options you know and why would a smith Moore gambit care you know at least i would be able to play the smith Moore gambit against this group of people right no <laughs> the reason you can't play it against that group of people they, there is another option available to them they can actually just sacrifice material themselves they don't have to play your smith Moore gambit at all they can they can counter your gambit with a gambit if they want and i know that sounds crazy but it, it's it's an option and it's actually kind of a scary option so one idea is they can play this move. They can play the move e5. And they can just gambit against your gambit. They can just play aggressive. They can just say, no, I don't want to play 
your gambit line. I just I'm gonna play e5 and I'm just gonna play a super aggressive opening. And this is kind of weird. This opening is kind of weird because it actually turns into kind of a two knights defense, um, where you're you're actually copying moves directly from the two knights defense, and you get a very similar aggressive position. Actually, you sacrifice a whole piece by the time you're done with it. And I'll show you the theory here. So after e5, you would play like knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, knight g5. And if you're familiar with the two knights defense, this is like a fried liver attack. They're attacking f7. So you have to play d5, e takes d5, and anybody that's played the fried liver knows that knight takes d5, knight f7 is dangerous. So you would just continue with, with your fried liver moves, knight a5, bishop d5, bishop d7, queen e2, and then you get to play, uh, you got to hold your pawn on e5, and then b4. This actually traps your knight. This knight is trapped now, but like I said, this is a sacrifice. You're sacrificing this knight. h6, kicking back the knight, knight f3, you castle, and then get your knight, but now you gain some serious space. You get to play d3, and you get to play e4. And after this, look at this crazy pawn duo. Now, I know this looks like a really weird position, but believe it or not, black has more than enough compensation for a whole piece here. Uh, it's pretty incredible, but black is the one that's going to get to the, the attacking. So, I'm going to completely answer your question now, now that you've seen all the theory and you've seen all the options that are available to you. Why don't we see the Smith Mora Gambit more on the Grandmaster level? And the answer is easy, because Grandmasters don't want to play the C3 Sicilian. <laughs> it might not be in their repertoire. Not many Grandmasters play the C3 Sicilian, especially Grandmasters that want to play something like the Smith Mora Gambit, because they're playing open Sicilians. They're sacrificing whole pieces and whole queens and stuff like that in the open Sicilian. They're playing other Gambit lines. They're playing other weird stuff. You know, if they're feeling aggressive and they want to play something Gambity. They don't want to say, yeah, I want to play something gambity, but you know what? I'm also willing to play a super boring C3 Sicilian. <laughs> Those things don't mix. And when you play the smith Moore Gambit, you are also playing a C3 Sicilian. And I think that's the main reason. It's a repertoire reason that we do not see the smith Moore Gambit more. Because in spite of the smith Moore Gambit's problems in the main line of the smith Moore Gambit, I think it's, it's as acceptable as some other Gambit's that we see people trying to play. So I think I think there's a little bit more there than meets the eye. But I don't want to play a C3. I don't want to play a C3 Sicilian either. <laughs> so that's the real reason that we don't see more Grandmasters play the Smith Mora Gambit. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope this you found this video very helpful. Um thank you very much for watching.